There's one way unto the Father, and it's through the Son. I come to you today to profess the name of Jesus Christ above every other name, that at his name every knee shall bow and tongue confess that he is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the hope that this life affords is not found in celebrities, nor in culture, but in the Son of God, begotten of the Father, the one who is from above, the eternal Word of God who made fl himself flesh am and dwelt amongst us, and even went unto death upon the cross. And on the third day, he rose again victorious. He has conquered the grave, the one appointment that we all have. Jesus has overcome. And those who believe in him will be overcomers as well. You too will overcome the grave as you turn from the idle pomp of this age and turn to the Son of God, the one who is begotten of the Father. You too will know freedom from the yoke of sin and slavery, from the bondage of this life, and be brought alive in Christ. You see, status among men will not lead to life, but rather, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ leads to life. He's the rock of the ages, the firm foundation on whom we can build our lives upon. And yet we've been deceived by the culture, saying, live for yourself, live for money, live for status. But don't you see these things fade away? Even the wealthiest and most famous people get caught up in, in, in depression and anxiety. But Jesus said, come unto me, all who are weary, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You see, the freedom from sin and from depression and from all of the captivity, all of the burden of life is found in Jesus Christ because he's overcome the grave and he's sinless, he's spotless, he's fairer than the sons of men, fully man, fully God. And those who trust in him will be set free. The verdict is this. Though light has come into the world, people love the darkness more than they love the light. Is that you today? Do you love your sin more than you love the Son of the living God? More than you love the one who is revealed in inexpressible light, the Lord Jesus Christ? Inexpressible light. The Bible says God is light and in him is no darkness. And as you look upon Jesus, the, the, the one who is light itself, who is the light of the world, you are free. You're set free from the bondage. The chains come off. The shackles come off. And you're set free. There are many things, ladies and gentlemen, that can captivate the soul, the attention. Fornications, promiscuous living, or even pornography. One third of the internet today is porn. We've got a nation addicted to that stuff. And it's like a drug. You just want more and more of this stuff. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's disgusting. And you need to repent and believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. But everyone has sinned, that's the point. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. You see, there's no, there's no distinction. Me, I'm the worst of sinners. But God set me free. I stand here as a living testimony today that as I believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ, I was set free from, from all of the things. I was set free from myself, set free from sin, set free from pride set free from being a corrupt man where the, where the wrath of God remained on me but I was brought into light as I put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and you can know the same testimony in your life freedom from this yoke of sin and slavery that's why I come to you to profess these truths to you today Jesus says I am the way the truth and the life no man comes unto the Father except through me that means there's no other avenue unto salvation no, not even Confucius or Muhammad. There's one way unto the Father, and it's through the Son. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth, apart from the one begotten from above. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except through him. The way unto salvation, the truth that surpasses all truth, and the life, as in Beyond this life, he reigns, for, he reigns eternal. He is from everlasting to everlasting, the rock of the ages. His name is Jesus Christ. Come to him with faith today. Turn from the idle pomp of this life and turn to Jesus Christ. The promised Messiah has come. The one who would be sought out by the Gentiles as well has come. Yes, indeed, the salvation of God can be known by all nations, by every tongue, by every creed, by every nation. We can all come into friendship with God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. No, this isn't 
uh, your good works outweighing your bad works. No one is good. People think that the Bible says, oh, you've just got to be good. No, it doesn't. The Bible says that God is good and that the way that we get to God is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got no doubt many of you got, have good intentions with your life, but ultimately if you live for yourself, it will lead to death. Broad is the path that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. And as we come to Jesus, we can know the salvation of God. He is the narrow way. In fact, Jesus claimed that he is the gate. And if you try to enter by another means, you are a thief or a robber. So there's one way into the sheepfold. There's one way into the house of God. And it's through faith in the Son. Yes, indeed, he has overcome the grave. And that's why I stand here today with the resurrection power of God living inside of me. And you can know the same testimony in your life, knowing that Jesus indeed has overcome the grave. You know, all of the disciples actually denied Jesus as he was being put to death. And then, as he rose again, they all went unto death, uh, professing the name of Jesus. And even in our nation, we are forerunners of the faith. Charles Spurgeon, John Wesley, the Queen. We are forerunners of the, of the faith in our nation. And yet, we seem to have forgotten. A generation has gone by and we've forgotten the one who has brought us into life, who has brought us into prosperity as we put our trust in him. While I'm calling the nation unto repentance, I'm calling us back into communion with God through faith in God's one and only Son, that we would know life and rest and everything else that God offers to those who trust in him. It's not found in meditation. You know, we've got this craze running the nation, which is like, uh, mindfulness. You find answers in and of yourself. It's not going to work. It's not going to happen. Nor are you going to find answers from, from following a football team. They might have one victory, but the only one who is truly victorious is Jesus Christ. He's overcome the grave. He's conquered death. He's resurrected. He's the resurrected King. The true victory is found in Him. So call upon Him this day that you might be saved. But ladies and gentlemen, it's not just a one-off thing. It's a continual abiding in Christ, and then He comes and abides in you. It's a continual seeking of the Lord, and then He comes and gives you all that you'll never need. It's not just a one-off fling. Thank you. This is a faithful commitment to God Almighty. This is a covenant relationship that I'm calling you into. A covenant with God that has been sealed by the blood of Yeshua. That has been sealed by the blood of Jesus. I'm calling you into covenant with God Almighty. He's the only one worthy of entering into covenant with. Because he lives and reign, it reigns in an inexpressible light. Because he, is, he lives and reigns forever. So come into covenant, into friendship, into communion with God Almighty, the, the, the rock of the ages. Come to him with thanksgiving. Come into covenant that has been sealed by the blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. You know, in our lives, we're supposed to reflect the covenant. But we've lost sight of, of covenant uh, marriage in our nation. We've lost sight of any proper friendships. It's all just fickle. All just living, living a lie. Why are we living a lie? Because we don't know the truth. In our nation today, his name is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. So come to him with thanksgiving, with faith, and he indeed will grant you mercy. Despite the fact that we don't deserve a thing, God grants mercy to those who trust in his Son. That is the avenue unto salvation. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the way to God Almighty. No, it's not through uh, Pastor, Pastor Paul down the street. It's through Jesus Christ. We can all come into communion with God through faith in the Lord Jesus. We can all come into fellowship with God through faith in the Lord Jesus, not by our own means or by another man, but by the Son of Man, the one who was prophesied about in Daniel chapter 9, the one who would be from above, fully man, fully God, the Son of God, that he might save us from our sin, from the corruption of this life, from the fornications and the lying and the deceiving and the killing and the anger, you know, two of, the, two of the disciples were actually nicknamed Sons of Thunder, which means they were full of anger, full of anger. 
And yet, despite the fact that they were corrupt with anger and malice and hate, Jesus still called them and said, come out of the darkness and come into light. And he does the same today. He wants you to come out of darkness for your own sake. Because as you look upon the darkness of life and the sin of life, you become like what you, look, what you set your gaze upon. As you, as you look upon the Instagram celebrities it might be, or maybe even someone on BBC, you, you, you become like them. As you look and gaze upon them, you want to be like them, and then you never are like them, and then you're never satisfied. Or as you look upon uh, the athletes, and you see that six-pack, and you think, oh, I want to be just like that, and then you never get to that stage, and then you're, you're, you're left broken. But as you look upon Jesus... Streams of living water will flow from within you. The wells of salvation will flow through your life. It's, blue, it's beautiful. It's the best news in all the earth. The sinless one, the one who is from heavenly places, came to dwell amongst men and even went unto death upon the cross for the sake of all mankind, that we would be free from the addictions of this life, that we, we, we would be free from sin, from the curse of sin and death and slavery. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 says, Vanity, vanities, it's all vanity. In fact, in the Hebrew, it means like, it's like smoke. It's like the kettle smoke. Life is like the smoke. It's vanity, it's vanity. It's all vanity. But as you trust in the Lord, Yeah, you're right. It's Ecclesiastes 1, I think. Yeah, bless you. And you, it's nice to see you. Yeah, my sister is right. She's saying that there's a verse in the Old Testament that describes life being like the smoke, being like the, the, even the steam from a kettle. It's, it's there, but then it soon just disappears. But Jesus is the living Word of God. He's the eternal Word of God. He's the rock of the ages, the eternal Son of God. And as we come to him, we're brought into his kingdom, which is an everlasting kingdom. Rock in a weary land, Jesus. So the life no longer is a vanity, but rather we set our feet upon the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, in the New Testament, in First uh, Peter, it says that life is like the grass of the field. In the Psalms, it says, life is like a flower, as in it ri the grass, it rises up and then it fades away. The flower, it has such beauty, but it fades away. But Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He's overcome the fading nature of this life. He is the overcomer. And those who trust in him will overcome the vanity, will overcome the, 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 the being like the grass, will overcome the flippant nature of life and come into everlasting life. And it's nothing in our own merit that affords us eternal life. Not our goodness outweighing our badness. It's the goodness of God made manifest on the cross of Calvary. The perfect sacrifice for sin that all who trust in Him would be saved. That's why I come to you this day because I love you all and I want you to know the truth, that the truth might set you free. You know how ironic it is, I live my life in the light and people persecute me for living in the light. You know, I don't go off into the darkness and into the alleyways of this life. I stand on the street corner professing that Jesus is the way unto the Father and people persecute me. When I do it out of love, I want you to know that there's hope in this life. I want you to know that there's freedom on offer to those who come to Christ. Freedom from the yoke of sin and death. No longer bondage to pornography. Just try in your own strength to give up porn for a week. It's really hard. I, you have to come before the Lord and say, Lord, give me strength. to free, break, I want to break free from these addictions. But we're so captive to the things of this world. And it leads to, to death. Why, why are we so consumed? It's because we've been, de we've been deceived in our nation by the devil. He wants you to be consumed with the idle pomp, with the, with the fornications. He wants you to be consumed with yourself because those things lead unto death. But I stand before you as a child of light, been born again from above, and I profess to you the way unto salvation, and it's by the Lord Jesus Christ.
unto the Father and is through the Son. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today that you might be set free from the yoke of slavery, from the captivity of this life. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And in doing so, he's claiming to be God because we know that God is light and in him is no darkness. So Jesus saying he is the light of the world, he's saying he's from above. Well, I come to you today to profess to you his holy name, that all who trust in him would be saved. For indeed he rose again from the grave. He's conquered death. All the disciples claim to know him and claim to love him. They denied him as he was being put to death. But on the third day he rose again and Jesus met with all the disciples. And then these men, they all went to death, professing that Jesus had overcome, that indeed he was the Christ, that indeed he was the promised Messiah. They, were, they stood as living testimonies of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. This isn't um, what we see in uh, King's Cross here, where people are going to push that bit of metal against the wall, where someone's used um, partly things within the biblical narrative to, to make write a fiction story. This is a reality that there is one who's overcome the grave. His name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God from above. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at his name, Jesus, every knee shall bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He's now seated at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places and the elect, the people of God, those who have trusted in God's one and only Son, are seated in heavenly places with God. In fact, in Revelation it says that the people of God will come to God with the cherubim and the seraphim and the sea of glass mingled with fire and say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who is and who was and who is to come. Surely he has granted salvation unto all nations. Surely he has granted all uh, salvation to everyone who would believe upon him, believe upon the resurrection, believe upon God's one and only Son. For indeed he loved the world, his creation, so much that despite the fact we are in rebellion and we want to do what we want to do and we want to be righteous in and of ourselves, God still had compassion on those who would trust in his Son. Despite the fact we're born in the, under the seed of Adam, born in rebellion, you know, I, I don't have any children, but my parents and other people have said that when you have children, you realize that people are born in rebellion. Because from the very moment that their the conception, their breed, they're born into sin, they want to rebel against every instruction and everything you tell them you want to do. Well, it's similar for us before God. We're born in rebellion. And we want to rebel against God and His nature and His righteousness. And despite all of that, we can be born into imperishable seed. We can be born into the seed of Christ, which is imperishable seed. We can be brought out from the rebellion and the yoke of sin, which is death, and into life. That's why I come to you today to say that there's an avenue out from the darkness, and His name is Jesus Christ. In fact, Jesus said, I am the gate, and those who enter through me will come into my sheepfold. But by no other means is there a way unto salvation. Only those who enter through Christ. In fact, he said, after he said that he was the gate, he said, anyone who enters by another means is a thief or a robber. Is that you? Do you think you're going to gain salvation in your own strength? Do you think you're going to have any, have any merit in and of yourself? No. And nor can you earn it. It's only what God has done for us. Many people think, oh, I'm good. You know, if there is a God, maybe I'll, I'll get in. No, it's not that way. It's not that way. I profess to you the way today to repent and believe upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No, it's not for praying five times a day. It's through turning to Christ, the only one who's able to take us from darkness to light. Not ourselves, but God himself takes those who trust in him into light, into life. It can only be that way so that no man can boast. Such is our corruption, that if we were good in and of ourselves, I'd say to my neighbor, I've fulfilled this part of the commandment. I've prayed five times this. 
I've got more money than you so I can buy a better prayer mat. And all the things of life come in. But you see, salvation is a gift. We don't deserve it. It's a gift from above. Grace means unmerited favor. We don't deserve a thing. But God grants us eternal life if we trust in his son. That means there's no distinction. That means we can't say to each other, oh, I did this, you did that. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You know, we've got a nation addicted to pornography. And, and the Bible talks about how fornication and adultery is wrong. And we've got people consumed with this stuff. Like a third of the internet is porn. And from a young age, people are like, start watching this stuff. We're consumed with it. It's, it's sinful. It, it corrupts the soul. It corrupts the mind. It destroys who you are. You're no longer able to relate to people because you're so consumed with this stuff. Well, I'm calling you into freedom. I'm calling you out of bondage. You don't have to be slave to that stuff. You don't have to be slave to sin. You don't have to be sla a slave to the world. You can come alive in Christ. You know, and we're, we're made righteous as we look upon the Son. We're made like Him. As we look upon the Holy One, the Lord Jesus, we're made like Him. We're made righteous like Him. We want to be like Him. We want to please Him. We want to obey Him because of all that He's done for us. When I first came to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I was crying all the time. Because as I looked upon Christ, I was just so broken. I'm so, I, but as I looked and gazed upon the Son, I was set free, I was made righteous, I was made holy. And granted, I, I'm not perfect now, but I've certainly been regenerated by the Holy Spirit of God. I no longer masturbate or watch porn or, or I'm no longer consumed with myself. I'm consumed with the Son of the living God and His Word. And I've been set free. And you can know the same testimony in your life, freedom from the yoke of sin and slavery. So that's why I come to you today to tell you that there is, a, there is hope in this life. And it's not in mindfulness. It's not found in and of ourselves. It's found in Jesus Christ. In fact, it says in the Bible that God loved the world so much that he gave us his one and only son. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already. So that your condemnation, your demise will be lack of faith in Christ. The judgment of God will remain on you. The wrath of God will remain on you for your lack of belief in Christ. Not because you've sinned, all have sinned. It, it will be solely now in the new covenant on, because of your lack of faith in Christ. So that's why I come to you, to the public space here, because I want you to be awoken from the death. Awoken from the death of this life and into the kingdom of light. The Bible says that we're dead in our transgressions, which means as we continue to sin and live in sin and live for ourselves and solely for ourselves, we're dead in that stuff. As in it, it leads to death. But we can come alive in Christ. Oh, hallelujah. I profess to you life today. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except through him. Many will say, well, I follow uh, one strand of, of, of a religious community. And, and I'll say, well, there's only one way. And it's through faith in Jesus of what he did and, and what he is and that indeed he has overcome death not just because he was a nice man because he was from above and he overcame the grave he is the resurrected king of heaven and earth all of heaven and all of earth will one day glorify the Lord Jesus Christ but there's an opportunity today to believe in him there's an opportunity to believe in Jesus that you might be saved that's why I come to you today I've just been walking around King's Cross Station here. I recognize uh, some of you <laughs> have caught me twice. Well, maybe God's speaking to you. It's certainly not me. The Bible says, The Word became flesh, as in the Logos, the eternal Word of God, became flesh. That's what the Bible says. 
Some people say the Bible doesn't say Jesus is God. It says the Word, as in the Logos, which means the eternal Word of God, became flesh. God became flesh. Jesus Christ. Though the Word was made through Him, the world did not recognize Him. He came to that which was his own. He came to the people of Israel who were supposed to recognize their own Messiah and they were so caught up in their own pride that they didn't even recognize him. Or at least many didn't. It was just the sinners. It was the outcast who recognized who he was. Such is the same today. People are caught up in religion. People are caught up in and of themselves. People are caught up in their own self-righteousness. And they can't see the son of the living God. They think they know best, but they see the light comes into their life and they love the darkness more than they love the light. The true light which gives light to everyone came into the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. But all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Well, that's what I profess to you today, ladies and gentlemen, that there is hope. You can be born from above as you trust in Jesus Christ. You can be set free from the yoke of death and be brought into life everlasting as you trust in Jesus Christ. Amen.